That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program. And Signal Gasoline is tops, too, tops in quality. It takes extra quality, you know, to give you extra mileage. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline, available wherever you see the Signal Circle sign in yellow and black that identifies independent Signal dealers from Canada to Mexico. the whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now the whistler's strange story, Search for an Unknown. The tall, dark-haired man and his companion moved away from the bar, crossed the cocktail lounge, and stopped before the huge windows to gaze out over the city. As they stood there, watching the flickering lights across San Francisco Bay, the girl unconsciously began toying with the shiny new wedding band on her finger. Then as the man raised his glass to drink, she turned and looked up to him. What are you thinking about, Frank? Albert Maxwell... A little guy over there across the bay waiting in the death cell. What time is it? He's got ten minutes to go. He deserves to die. Yeah. What if I'd played this case smart? Things might have turned out better. Sometimes I wish I'd never been mixed up in it at all. <laughs> Do you, darling? If you hadn't, you wouldn't have met me. I'd have found you somewhere, darling, sooner or later. You know, Julie, maybe I ought to give it up. Quit making like a private eye and take up selling shoelaces. I'd much rather you remain Frank Ferguson, private investigator. Funny, most wives would object. Would it make any difference if I did? Maybe. Maybe not. Come on, Julie, let's go home. All right. Frank, in a few minutes, when the execution's over, you're going to forget the whole thing, aren't you? Sure. Sure, I'll forget it. As Frank Ferguson and his bride of 24 hours moved across the cocktail lounge toward the elevators, he wondered if he could forget it, forget the story at all. Of course, it wasn't his. He'd only played a small part in it. Actually, it was Duncan McKay's story. Duncan McKay, head of the largest gambling syndicate west of the Rockies. And Ferguson's thoughts went back to the night it all began. The night months ago when he arrived at McKay's heavily guarded estate in San Mateo had been ushered into the billiard room by Jim Slade, McKay's bodyguard. <laughs> Mr. McKay? Yes, yeah, Slade, what is it? Oh, come in, come in. Uh, so, you're a billiard expert. <laughs> so you're Ferguson, huh? Yeah, I'm Ferguson. You know... You don't look... Uh... I don't look like a private eye. That's what they keep telling me. <laughs> you, uh, you play? By the boys along Montgomery Street, I was voted most likely to rip up the table in 1949. Yeah, how'd you play this one? Against the cushion. Where else? Five says I do it the hard way. Five? <laughs> you can deduct it from my bill, huh? Why did you send for me, McKay? Well, they tell me you're a pretty smart boy. Let's get to the point, huh? Sure. The point, Ferguson, is that... Uh, somebody is out to kill me. That's news? All right, all right. I've been threatened before, but this time... Well, it's a little different. I received a letter a few days ago, a letter threatening my life. Doesn't sound like any of your former playmates, hmm? Yeah, that's right. They wouldn't operate that way. From the crowd, you don't get advance notice. You suddenly wind up in an alley full of slugs. So you got a letter. Why worry? You got a nice set up here. You can hide behind your steel fence and those guards. There isn't a chance of anybody getting close enough to you to do any damage. What are you so nervous about? I'm not nervous, Ferguson. 
Not worried at all. I'd say I'm amused. My curiosity has been aroused. This whole thing intrigues me. I don't get it. You will. Here, just a second. Yeah. Yeah, Yesterday afternoon's paper on page two. Pictures and everything. Mm Mm-hmm. So a couple of citizens in Frisco received threatening letters. Same as yours? Yes, the same. Julie Wilson, Albert Dobbs. A hat check girl and a hardware clerk. Friends of yours? Never saw them before in my life. She's a good-looking dame. If you like hat check girls. I don't throw rocks at anybody. According to the paper, the Wilson girl doesn't know Dobbs, and he's never heard of her. So there it is, Ferguson. Three strangers. We each get a letter threatening us with death. And we don't know why. There must be some connection. Now, that's why I hired you, Ferguson. I want you to find out what that link is. What ties me up with a hat check girl and a guy who sells nuts and bolts in some crummy hardware store. You resent the company, McKay? That's what's bothering you? At some point in our lives, our paths must have crossed. Somewhere, we... Somewhere along the road, the three of you kicked somebody in the teeth. And now this somebody wants to introduce you to an embalmer the hard way. Look, I want you to find out all there is to know about this Wilson dame and this guy, Albert Dobbs. Where they're from, what they've done, who they know, everything. I want a complete report on both of them. All right, McKay. I'll even find out what kind of toothpaste they use. Uh, Let let me see you make this shot, huh? Ten says that you don't. (laughs) Ten says I do. (laughs) Thought you said you weren't nervous, McKay. I'll uh, add it onto the bill, hmm? I'll see you around. Don't worry, I'll take care of everything. You smile as Ferguson leaves, don't you, McKay? Confident that once he finds out all there is to know about Julie Wilson and Albert Dobbs, once the link is established between the three of you, that you'll know who is threatening your life, and then you'll take care of everything. In the days that follow, you wait anxiously for some word from Ferguson. And then finally, one evening. Yes? Hello, McKay. This is Ferguson. Well? I thought you better know, McKay. Somebody else received one of those letters. A guy named Brovelli. Gino Brovelli. You know him? Brovelli? I never heard of him. But put him on the list, along with Julie Wilson and that Dobbs guy. Talk to him. Okay. But he won't answer. Why not? He, uh, he met with an accident. He's on a slab at the morgue. With the prologue of Search for an Unknown, the Signal Oil Company brings you another strange story by The Whistler. But first, a word of wisdom about a major purchase that many of you drivers will be making during the coming winter month, a new battery. When you compare the cost of different batteries, remember this. The important thing is not the first cost, but the cost per month, which, of course, depends on how long the battery lasts. Measured by that yardstick, One of today's most economical batteries is the new Extra Long Life Signal Deluxe Battery. Instead of being guaranteed for only a year or 18 months like most batteries, the new Signal Deluxe Batteries are guaranteed for a full two and a half years on a service basis. The secret of this amazingly long life is their improved type all rubber separators, the finest kind known to battery engineering. In addition, this improved construction helps Signal Deluxe Batteries deliver up to 35% more power, a great help in taking care of the many electrical gadgets on today's automobile. So before you buy any battery, find out from your signal dealer the generous trade-in he's now offering for old batteries, plus his convenient credit terms on new Signal Deluxe batteries. You'll see for yourself that on a per-month basis, it actually costs less to enjoy the quicker starting and long dependability of today's finest battery, a Signal Deluxe Battery. And now back to the Whistler. You don't like to admit it, do you, McKay? But the news is more than a little disturbing. The news that the killer has claimed his first victim. A man named Bravelli is dead. 
a man who, along with Julie Wilson and Albert Dobbs, received a threatening letter similar to the one that was sent to you. But the killer will never reach you, will he? Not as long as you remain within the protective walls of your estate, with Jim Slade, your bodyguard, close by your side. You're going to play it safe and wait until you find the link, the tie between you, Julie Wilson, and Albert Dobbs. And then you'll go after the killer yourself. As you pace the floor of your library, a thousand questions flash through your mind, questions you waste little time asking when Ferguson finally arrives. That's what I said, McKay, a window washer. Ravelli, a window washer. Yeah, he fell out of a 20-story window late yesterday afternoon. It looked like an accident, that is, until this letter came around to his boarding house this morning. The landlady spotted it the way it was addressed, you know. She called the cops. Now, wait a minute. Rovelli was already dead when the letter arrived. Yeah, the letter was postmarked yesterday at 5 p.m. Rovelli took a dive around 3. Yeah, but why mail a letter to a man after you've already killed him? Well, maybe the killer saw an opportunity to knock off Rovelli ahead of schedule and took it. That's one way of looking at it. Yeah, there's another. A couple of more, McKay. Suppose Bravelli wasn't on your friend's list at all. Suppose the letter was written by some crackpot, a, a guy with a warp sense of humor. You said the letter was the same. Well, sure, but anybody can get a piece of butcher paper and squirrel something on it with a hunk of red crayon. Ah, oh, and you think that's what happened? No, here's what I think happened. The killer hears about a guy falling out of a building. This gives him an idea. He decides to make you sweat a little, so he writes the letter. You get the picture? Yes, yes, I get the picture. Your nerves are showing, McKay. All right. All right. What do you want to... What do you find out about the others? The Wilson girl. Dobbs. Well, here's a ten-page report on Julie Wilson or a hat check girl faces life. She's a sweet kid, McKay. Here she, Ferguson. How'd you meet her? Barroom pickup? She throw herself at your feet when you bought her a beer? No. It was all very formal, McKay. The gent who owns the club where she works introduced us. Like I said, she's a sweet kid. I've been to the club lots of times. Somehow I never noticed her. Yeah, maybe that's because you never check your hat, huh? Uh, touche. Now, uh, how about this, this hardware clerk, this Albert Dobbs? What'd you dig up on him? I didn't. He's disappeared. Disappeared? I went around to his hotel this afternoon. The clerk told me he packed up and left. Address unknown. Fine, fine. That's great. Well, don't get excited. I got a couple of leads I'm going to check on as soon as I get back to town. I'll find him, McKay. I'll see that you do. And call me the minute you line up anything. Sure, sure. Slade? Yeah? You show Mr. Ferguson out and see I'm not disturbed for the next few hours. All right, Mr. McKay. It's almost four in the morning when you finally set aside the report on Julie Wilson. You've been over it again and again and again. But it's revealed absolutely nothing, not the slightest clue, not a single link to connect your life with that of the girl. You turn out the desk lamp, lean back in your chair, and close your eyes. There's still Albert Dobbs, the hardware clerk, isn't there, McKay? Yes. Perhaps in his story you'll find the missing pieces of the puzzle. The days drag on. You wait impatiently for Ferguson to call, but he doesn't. Then on the morning of the fourth day, Slade interrupts you at breakfast. Yeah? What is it, Slade? It's about Ferguson, Mr. McKay. Yeah? Well, how about him? He's been checking up on you. You what? Yeah, that's right. Been going around town asking a lot of questions. They're all about you. I don't like that, Slade. I don't like that at all. I'm not paying him to pry into... M- Wait a minute. How did you find out? I've had one of my boys tailing him for a week. Why, Slade? Well, I thought it would be a good idea. Yeah, what else have you found out? He's been spending a lot of time with that Julie Wilson. Now, getting real chummy. Real, real chummy. <laughs> of course, she's a good-looking doll. Yeah, yeah. She's up to something, Mr. McKay. Maybe she's in it with him. You, uh, you never trusted Ferguson, have you, Slade? No. Why hasn't he told you he's found Albert Dobbs? He, he what? Yeah. That's something else I found out. My boy tailed him two days in a row to a crummy little hotel on Mission Street. Only it wasn't until a couple hours ago he found out who Ferguson was seeing there. Dobbs? Dobbs. Ferguson was talking to the little guy in the lobby. It hasn't turned out the way you planned at all, has it, McKay? Slade is right. Ferguson must be up to something. 
You're not exactly sure just what it is, but you're not going to take any chances. You hurry to the phone and dial. And as you do, you notice your hand is trembling. You call Ferguson's office. There's no answer. Then you ring his apartment. Hello? Hello. Who is this? Well, who'd you wish to speak to? Ferguson. I'm a client of his. Oh, just a minute. Wilson, Dame. She's at his apartment. Uh Uh-huh. Hello? This is McKay. Yeah. Was that the Wilson girl? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. We figured it'd be a lot safer if she stayed here at my place while I'm away. You're not going anywhere, Ferguson. You're... Well, you're wrong, McKay. I am. Oh, you're wrong, Ferguson. I want to see you right away. Sorry, I'm due at the airport in half an hour. I'm flying down to L.A. I'll see you when I get back. I'm on to something. Yeah. Yeah, I'll bet you are. All right, Ferguson. I'll see you when you get back. You can count on it. Leaving town, is he? Yeah. He didn't mention Dobbs. We got to get moving, Slade. Ferguson's a smart operator. If he can fit this puzzle together before I do, he'll have me right behind the eight ball. Yeah. He gets a story from the girl, from Dobbs, checks on your background, and he's in. Yeah. He can cause you plenty of trouble and cost you plenty of money, too. Well, that may not be what he has in mind, but I'm not going to take many chances. From now on, I'm going to handle things my way. Tonight, we're going to drop around to Ferguson's apartment and have a nice, long talk with Julie Wilson. Yes? Hello, Julie. Hello. We're uh, friends of Ferguson. Oh, well, he isn't here right now. Yeah, I know. Come on, Slade. Oh, just a minute. What do you want? Relax. Nobody's going to hurt you. We just want to talk, that's all. About what? Yeah, this. A little report on you, Julie. I want to be sure you didn't leave out anything on purpose. Now, sit down. <laughs> I don't know anything about it. you got to believe me. Come on, me. sister. Now, take it easy, Slade. You might hurt the pretty lady. Please, I- I've told you all I know. Now, leave me alone. What did you tell Ferguson? What did you tell him he forgot to include in his report? Honest, I don't know what you mean. Now, look, it's getting late, and my patience is getting a little bit... Thi- oh, hello, Ferguson. You-, you got back from L.A. in a hurry. What's the idea, McKay? Oh, we uh, just drop around and have a... Friendly chat. Look, oh, I... McKay, I don't like guys to call on my girl unless she invites them. Y- your girl? That's what I said. Julie and I are going to get married. Please, Frank, it, it's all right. Married, huh? You know, I don't get you at all, Ferguson. When I showed you her picture in the paper, you didn't know it. I didn't then. This happened kind of quick between us. I see. I don't think you do, McKay. Whether you do or not, you can take a powder now and take your ape with you. Listen, Ferguson, All right, I... Slade, don't annoy Mr. Ferguson. His trinker figure is nervous. You might do something rash. Come on. We'll uh, see you around, Ferguson. Remember, I still want to talk to you. What do you think, Mr. McKay? I'd say the girl was leveling. But I'm still not sold on Ferguson. We'll find out soon enough. Where's Dobbs hiding out? Mission Street, near the waterfront. Not too far from here. Let's go see him. You know, he might have the answer. Yes, you want to believe that, don't you, McKay? That Dobbs holds the key to the mystery. That once you've heard his story, you'll know who sent the letter threatening your life. A quarter of an hour later, you park your car on Lower Mission Street while Slade hurries into a small, dimly lit hotel. A few minutes and he's back. Registered under a phony name. Clerk said he hasn't come in yet. Yeah, you sure? Cost me five bucks. I'm sure. All right. We'll wait. Give me a cigarette, will you, Slade? Sure, Mr. McKay. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. 
So what time is it? A little after two o'clock. Two o'clock. What's keeping him? Think he'll show? He's got to. I uh, never saw you like this, Mr. McKay. Jumpy, it isn't like... All right, I'm jumpy. What do you expect? Sure, sure. I don't like this setup, Slade. Don't like it at all. I've always known who my enemies were. Always been able to take care of them when they came around looking for trouble. This time, I don't know who I'm up against. Makes a lot of difference, Slade. Makes a lot... What's wrong? Up ahead. Just turned the corner. Coming this way. Could be. Wait. Wait till he walks by. Dobbs? Huh? Uh, uh, like yes. to, uh, to talk to you. Are you, uh... Your police? No, no, we're not the police. Uh, hey, take it easy, Dobbs. We're not going to hurt you. No, 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 wait, wait. Now relax. You're... Come on. Hello, Dobbs. What is... well, who are you? A handy guy for you to know, if you want to level with me. But uh, I don't understand. Hey, we'll talk about it on the way. Where are we going? Down to my place in the peninsula. Nice, quiet, very safe place for both of us, Dobbs. Both of us? I think it'd be a good idea for us to have a little talk. Maybe we can add up a few things and find out who's trying to kill us. Us? You mean you two? Yeah, yeah we're both in the same boat. Now get in, Dobbs. We're wasting time. Shortly after three in the morning, you arrive at the gates of your estate. Watch them swing open. You nod to the guard and drive on up the roadway to the house. And a few minutes later, you're sitting in the library, facing Albert Dobbs across the desk. Sure you won't have one, Mr. Dobbs? Uh, no, 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 thank you. Yeah. Now go ahead, Slade. Fix yourself a drink. Thanks. So you don't know why anyone would want to kill you, eh, Dobbs? No idea at all. No, no, Mr. McKay, I... I don't have any idea at all. You're scared, aren't you? Well, yes, yes, yes I am. Aren't you? I... Now, look, suppose you start in from the beginning. Maybe we can help each other. Uh, start in? Yeah, I want you to tell me all there is to know about Albert Dobbs. Where you're from, where you've been, what you've done, who you know, everything. Oh, I see, yes. Now, go ahead. Yes, well, uh... <clears throat> But I was born in 1893. 1893? <laughs> yeah, might as well pull up a chair, Slade. This is going to take a long time. But I've got a hunch this is it, and it's going to be worth it. Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending to tonight's story. Meantime, I'd like to ask one of you ladies a question. Are you going to serve iced tea with your Thanksgiving dinner? Of course not. In cold weather, we prefer a hot drink. Precisely. And just as you choose a different diet in cool weather, remember your car needs a different cold weather diet, too, if you want to keep performance up and wear down. Just what do you mean? By a cold-weather diet for a car. Well, first of all, the transmission and differential should be drained and refilled with the correct winter grade of signal gear lubricant. If your front wheel bearings and speedometer cable haven't been repacked for 5,000 miles, now is a good time to have your signal dealer tend to that. And, of course, the tired old motor oil should be drained and replaced with signal premium compounded motor oil, the new type oil that does so much more than just lubricate. What more can an oil do than lubricate? A good question. You see, because scientific compounds have been added to Signal Premium compounded motor oil, it actually removes carbon and prevents corrosion. That's why more and more drivers who want a sweeter running motor are switching to Signal Premium compounded motor oil. And now, back to the whistler. It's almost dawn now, and you're tired, aren't you, McKay? You lean back wearily in your chair, close your eyes, listen to the voice of Albert Dobbs as it drones on and on. Names, dates, places, and more names and dates and places. 
Not a one stirred a single spark in your memory. But the story of Albert Dobbs isn't over yet, is it? Somewhere your paths must have crossed. Somewhere you met the one person who now wants to kill you both. I had to leave. I went back to Los Angeles. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, when was this again? Well, see, 19... Uh, 1929. All right, all right. 1929, L.A. Uh, where'd you live? On uh, 54th Street, near Figueroa. Uh, where? Well, 54th Street. I had a small flat near the... Uh... What's the matter, Mr. McKay? Have I said something? In an instant, your thoughts raced back through the years. Back to that unfortunate little affair on 54th Street in Los Angeles. Nineteen years ago, wasn't it, McKay? You were just one of Galetti's strong-arm boys then, selling protection to small shopkeepers. And that night, your methods of persuasion proved fatal to a man who ran a grocery store. You're confident now that you're on the right track at last. Dobbs, the frightened little man who sits facing you across the desk, has established the link. The rest of his story will supply information you've been looking for. But you don't want your bodyguard Slade around over here. Uh, Slade. Uh, yeah, Mr. McKay? Yeah, why don't you turn in and get some sleep? Oh, that's all right. I don't think... You I... better... You better turn in, Slade. Sure. You're the boss. Now, all right, Dobbs. About 54th Street in L.A., I suppose you tell me who... Hello? McKay, this is Ferguson. Yeah, what do you want, Thomas? Look, McKay, you can thank Julie for this call. She talked me into it. I was in favor of letting you sweat. What are you talking about? Till I made that trip to L.A., I wasn't sure. I am now. I've got your man, the guy who's trying to kill you. As soon as I hang up, I'm calling the police. Wait a minute. You know who... Yeah. A guy named Maxwell died in L.A. His brother's been after you a long time, McKay. With all that protection you had, he couldn't get close to you. So he figured out a way to get you to come after him. What? That letter he sent you. He knew if he mailed the other two to a couple of strangers, people you'd never heard of, your curiosity would be aroused. The letter he sent to Julie was a blind. But the one he sent to himself was going to pay off. To himself? He'll kill you the first time he gets you alone, McKay, so I thought I ought to warn you. His real name is Albert Maxwell. But we know him as Albert Dobbs. <gasps> Dobbs? Dobbs? Is... That's right. I, I'm Albert Maxwell. Uh, wait, wait, wait a minute. You, you got me wrong. <laughs> you got me... <laughs> Sleep! <laughs> Sleep! Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at this same time. Signal Oil Company has asked me to remind you that the community chest drive, now in progress, deserves the support of all of us because all of us benefit either directly or indirectly through improved community conditions. So give generously to your community chest. Featured in tonight's story were Willard Waterman and Frank Lovejoy. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen with story by Adrian John Doe and music by Wilbur Hatch and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Remember at this same time next Sunday, another strange tale by The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>